Hello everyone, my name is Yun Shu Tai, and I'm from the University of Toronto, who are specialist in the pharmaceutical chemistry. And today my topic on the research presentation is about the research on the neurocircuits and treatment of anxiety. As we all know, the anxiety disorders have been a serious mental disease which has attracted the attention of researchers. Anxiety disorders cause excessive and persistent worry, fear, and anxiety response to real or perceived threat stimulus. Now let's go to the introduction page. So anxiety disorders are a multifaceted phenotype that includes variations in behavior, in the peripheral physiology, cognition, and emotions. With the development of life science, it is widely believed that the anxiety disorders are regulated by the neural circuits. According to previous study, the neural circuits of anxiety involve some brain regions, including the amygdala, the bite nucleus of stria terminalis, the BNST, anterior cingulate cortex, ACC, and medial prefrontal cortex, which is MPFC, and hippocampus. So with the efforts of researchers, great research progress has been made in the treatment of anxiety too. The cognitive behavior therapy, the CBT, has been shown to be effective for anxiety. In addition, the psychotherapy treatment of disorders is used as novel treatments, such as the Pavlovian fear conditioning paradigm. Imagine a world where we can rewrite the neural circuits responsible for anxiety, offering hope and relief to millions of people. Today, we will explore how cutting edge treatments are reshaping the future of anxiety disorders. Let's begin. The first thing is that we can see this large macro circuit Individual now is processing different information via the local pathways. The advent of optogenetics allowing in-depth interrogation of these micro circuits to enhance our understanding of the mechanisms, which among the amygdala, the BNST, the ventral hippocampus, and the MPFC, medial prefrontal cortex. This is a view of the rodent brain including uh, some circuits. But a more simplified model is made in my review article, and it's shown here. So we can see the amygdala, which receives the projections mostly from the sensory regions of the thalamus, and uh, it shows as number A in the circuit, is thought to play a crucial role in the development and expression of anxiety, according to a substantial body of data from research on rodents. And also the intercalated neurons, which are located between the BLA and CEA, uh, operate as relay of inhibitory GABAergic interneurons, activated by the BLA and directly stimulate the CEA. So here the BLA is the basal lateral amygdala, and it directly sends information to central amygdala. So it is something happening inside the amygdala. And the primary amygdala output route is the CEA. So this is all about the circuit B, and now let's talk about circuit C. So here, the anxiety bodily symptoms are caused by the activation of inhibitory GABAergic neurons, which project from the CEA to the brainstem and hypothalamus. Now what about number, uh, number D? So here, it has been proposed that the medial prefrontal cortex regulates the experience or expression of anxiety through the modulation of neuronal activity in the BLA. The amygdala output would be inhibited by this top-down regulation. And then for number E, the ventral hippocampus receives and sends information from or to many emotional centers such as the amygdala, hypothalamus, and medial prefrontal cortex. And lastly for G, uh, F and G, so we can see here, the MPFC receives projections not only from the ventral hippocampus, but also from multimodal association cortices and renal cortices, giving it access to highly processed information about the environment. The MPFC then projects directly to structures such as amygdala and the periaqueductal gray, which can act to produce appropriate defensive behaviors. Now let's talk about the therapy. The first is the non-medicine therapy. And one of the most popular treat, uh, behavior treatments for the anxiety problem is the exposure-based therapy. According to the idea of emotional processing, fear is represented by associative network that store data on the fear stimulus, the fearful reaction, and the significance of the stimulus and reaction. 
The Pavlovian fear conditioning paradigm provides a method to reconstruct fear learning as shown in the figure. Another popular technique for the treating anxiety problem is cognitive therapy. The Beck's tripart model of emotion, which postulates that thoughts, feelings, and behaviors are interconnected, forms the basis of the cognitive therapy. And then, for the physical treatment, we can say the first one is an Asian Chinese therapy called acupuncture. The idea of holism, songfu, meridians, and collaterals are key sources of inspiration for acupuncture theory. The needling group demonstrated that the ability of this therapy to change the activity of prefrontal cortex and the ability to regulate hormones as well. Although it has a long history, now let's talk about the electron convulsive therapy. It remains a controversial treatment option for severe anxiety disorders because this ECT, the electron convulsive therapy, results in a form of unconscious aversive conditioning, which suggests that most of the patients, if not all of them, have intense dread that gets worse during this procedure. And then for the medicine therapy, the first one is the neuro enhancers, also known as cognitive enhancers. It may be used for enhancing adaptive learning. Adding medications as cognitive enhancers to exposure treatment is helpful for the extinction learning process. For example, the successful fear extinction is linked to increased extracellular neurogenelling levels in the MPFC. And then the GABAergic medication. Well, the most important example of this one is the benzodiazepines, obviously. The benzodiazepines have been widely employed for the treatment of anxiety despite the emergence of negative perceptions surrounding its utilization in professional contexts. And lastly, the selective reuptake inhibitor. The SSRIs, the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, inhibitor include the Flovaxamine, the fluoxetine, and citrulline and paroxetine. Despite their difference, the common effect of them is serotonin transporter inhibition. So uh, selective noradaline reuptake inhibitor is also medication for the chronic treatment of anxiety. And let's see this figure. So here we can see a kind of beta receptor antagonist that leads to persistent incubation of Q fear, while for the benzodiazepines, it can be only used in short term. Okay, as we wrap up today, let's remember that while anxiety disorders may be complex, so are the neural circuits that hold the key to healing. By understanding these circuits and embracing innovative treatments, we can pave the way to a brighter and anxiety-free future for individuals around the world. Together, we can rewrite the narrative of anxiety and bring about positive change. Thank you for listening.